Now that the engine is completely disassembled, let's take a look at some of the components. So obviously the heart of the engine is the crankshaft, and I think you can see there's quite a lot of scoring on the big end journals here. The band round the middle is the unworn section. And if we zoom down onto that, I can persuade it to focus. I think you can see there's quite a, a pronounced wear ridge there. And I'm going to zero on the uh, the unworn ridge there. So obviously it moved slightly as I removed it, but this is just for a rough comparison. And next to that that ridge, that's the reading I'm getting. Uh, nearly a quarter of a millimetre of wear on that journal and the first undersize is 0.2 millimetre so this crank would need to go down to the uh, the maximum undersize there's uh, less wear in the uh, the other big end but uh, Overall, that's quite a warm crank. And perhaps we can do the same on the, the main bearing. And that's showing that it definitely needs to go down to the first undersize. So at some stage I'll be taking the uh, the crankshaft over to the uh, the engine reconditioners and getting them to quote on. I've got a um, source big end bearings. I think I've got um, undersized main bearings in my stock. And uh, we have a look at one of the pairs of big end shells. You can see a lot of. Uh, material embedded in the white metal and uh, let's see if I can see the numbers there so you can see these were zero 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 standardized bearings and um, the OEM federal mogul so these are um, Unavailable except as um, if you can find them old stock. Uh, North Leicester Motorcycles uh, ran out many years ago, had shells remanufactured once, and then had shells remanufactured again. So that there are shells available. There is even uh, a not recommended um, third oversize beyond what was um, ever done by the factory, which uh, can save a crankshaft. So next we'll move on to the rods and with the instruments I have on hand which are not entirely adequate um, I don't have a good um, bore gauge in this size but it does appear that the big end eye is still round um, I'll get that checked when I go over to the engine reconditioners but it does appear to be round so um, we should be able to reuse the rods. We'll need um, small end bearings. Now on many engines you can um, recircle the rods. You simply skim um, the joint between the rod uh, body and the cap and then recircle them. But of course Marini used a fancy serrated joint which in theory you could skim material of both but only if you have the original cutter that was used 
you know, as a, you could do it, it could be done. But rods are available, um, and the cost of the work to recircle them would probably exceed the cost of a a replacement rod. So here's one of the oversized pistons, and these were uh, like a two millimeter oversize, giving you a um, 366 cc 367 I forget the exact number it's very close to that usually called the 375 you can see this considerable scuffing um, these are only done I'm told six or seven thousand miles not very much and I'm a little undecided in what actually went on with this engine. There are indications that the engine has actually done considerable miles, but for the bores to be worn out, and I showed you a barrel previously with the, the multiple wear ridges in it, one from each ring, that has to be abrasive. And to back up that theory, there's also the wear on this uh, this pin, which um, I can feel a slight wear ridge between this journal, which ran in the piston, and the, that little unworn ring there. Uh, and then there's a considerable step where the rod was running. And I think the engine has was high mileage and was already considerably worn, and then something to do with the way the uh, the rebar was carried out has introduced a lot of abrasive into the engine, and the surfaces that have worn most were the surfaces that, is, that were previously worn. You know, if there's no room for um, the abrasive to get in it's not going to get in but any surfaces where there was a large clearance and the abrasive could get in then wear, wore um, at a, a, an accelerated rate so the gearbox appears to be fine that's of course splash lubricated not pumped So here's the inlet valve, and you can see there's a lot of wear on the valve stem. The guides are, are worn. I don't know if I can show this on camera. But if I move the valve uh, in this direction, there's not a whole lot of play. But the forces are from the rocker are in this direction. And let's see if I can bring you in a little tighter. I think I can see that in the camera fairly well. Um, I did set up a, a dial gauge and measured the wear, and and it's nearly um, it's over 0.2 millimeters, so that's well beyond the the wear limit. So that would mean um, new valves and guides. And seeing as these are the old style valve, with this extended square groove, rather than the the later style semicircular groove, uh, that would mean new um, 
Raul Collitz as well.